Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. I want to be very careful in the choice of words and phrases that we use. When you say secessionist, it means that there is already a proclamation and a formation of a government by a group of people concerning a specific jurisdiction. In the case of what we're dealing with within the Nigerian state, that is not the case. That is the real um, issues that we have on ground. And we must never forget that Nigeria is, a, is in a state of flux. A number of issues are not very clear. It is unfortunate that you were reading the statement from the DSS and you are not showing the footage. Yeah. If you were showing the footage, you would have observed that my very good friend and brother, Peter Afunaya, the DSS spokesperson, was reading a script. While even reading the script, he was very careful and he stuck to the script very carefully. The second person that has spoken on some of the issues that have made the airwaves is the official cabinet ranking member in charge of information and culture, my good brother, Lai Mohammed. If you play back the footage of his press briefing, you will observe that he buried his head with his glasses and concentrated trying to make sure that he was reading the script that he was reading. And as such, if you take a look at Citizen Lai Muhammad, who happens to be the Minister of Information and Culture, who all of us know speaks extempore, who we know he speaks fluently, now bearing his head and reading a script without raising his head in the space of about five minutes of reading. It's only when he's trying to adjust the microphone or move the page that he raised his head slightly. That, to me, is a very good indicator that every analyst and every media outlet must be very careful the way we engage the discussions on this subject matter. It is still in a state of flux. It is still an evidence that when you look at the spectrum of ranking of states, either you are using the failed states index, you are using the human rights index, or you're using any of the World Bank or the United Nations Development Indicative Human Development Index to channel the governance issues, and you're using the security parameters framework. We have to be very, very careful. And I will plead with everyone out there not to engage the issues without allowing them to settle. If a minister of information are to stick to his notes, if the DSS spokesperson stuck to the notes and was even, ordinarily, these are times that we need to begin to do the content analysis and context analysis of the managers of the information system of the Nigerian state. So that we will see clearly that a lot of statecraft is playing out in the last couple of weeks. I was on this site with um, my brother Amechi, and we were discussing the subject matter of whether Nigeria was a failed state or otherwise. And it had to do with the issues of the security and some of these noises that were being made that were deliberately being misinterpreted by some schools of thought or defined in a manner that 
was strategic in nature, either to distract or to desensitize or to demonize some individuals. If that is the case, and we've been able to achieve a new vista of saying, because on that program that day I demanded and requested that the governance information management system should change and that we needed to have the president commander in chief speak directly. And fortunately, within the space of about a week and a half, we had him speaking through Arise Television and then through the NTA. It's helped us to stabilize the Nigerian state. I am hoping that all stakeholders of the Nigerian project will take time to manage the information and sift through. We're already seeing some elements of the data in public domain being challenged by the Kenyan government. Yeah. You have some version at the international mm -hmm. level demanding that some procedures are likely to be entered into. So we need to exercise a lot of caution until we have the day in courts for Mazi Kanu, we cannot say this was actually what transpired. If you ask yourself the question, when the news broke out at around 2 a.m. yesterday concerning the breaching of citizen Sunday Adeyemo, also known as Igboho, a number of people for about 12 hours were saying that Igboho stage managed that. Yes. And eventually, we ended up having a situation where video clips were made available and ultimately the press briefing by the Department of State Security Service. For me, therefore, it means that if Nigeria is in a state of flux, what exactly is informing this state of flux? If it is part of a larger state craft, what are the goals, objectives, strategic and proactive goals, objectives of that state craft dispensation that we are dealing with? We need to clearly understand it. For some of us who have taken the pains of trying to understand the present administration from 2015, November 17 on NTA, I said that the style of administration by the incumbent APC-led federal government appeared totalitarian tiptoeing. And if it is a totalitarian tiptoeing, you will see elements of PRS what is PRS? Problems, reactions, and solutions. They will allow some information to come out into public domain. Citizens will start engaging it without sitting down to really dissect it properly. And they will mirror and sift through, and they will adjust accordingly. When you are discussing the statement made by Citizen Malami, who happens to be the incumbent Attorney General and Minister of Justice. You will discover he used some phrases, intercept. Mm -hmm. If you use the phrase intercept and you had with you the law enforcement entities, it means that it must have been authorized by some level and that there is an operational plan that the deployed until we see the operational plan and they shared the information of the operational plan with us part of which was disclosed by Lai Mohammed mm. by saying that they have been following and tracking Mazen Namdekanu for close to two years and he disclosed some elements to us those elements we will keep interrogating and we cannot safely and I'll plead with colleagues and the media to understand that until we have the day at, I think that's going to be on the 26th of this month in court, we cannot say much because a lot will keep unfolding. And many of the legal practitioners, either for the Nigerian state or for the victims 
or these citizens that are persons of interest will need to understand that they need to do a lot of studying of the issues. Um, for me, it's time for us to begin to ask the question, what do we really want to achieve with the Nigerian state? How do we want to ensure that all citizens and stakeholders believe in this Nigerian project? We have suddenly had an opportunity of rapport more, as it were, that people are willing to allow the government after the president had spoken directly to us. I am hoping that, for example, the National Assembly will cut down on their recess and even before they go for their recess, if it were possible for them to pass the Electoral Act. If they can pass the Electoral Act and expedite action on the constitutional amendment or review process, it will set the Nigerian state on the right trajectory. Then, another component of the indicators of failed state is that we talk about legitimacy. Some of these things are helping to redeem the legitimacy of the government. But there is another component of the indicators that says you must apply uniformly. And that is where our very good friend, uh, Dr. Autumn of Benue State, the governor, yes. is coming from. It says you must apply the legal framework and the compliance thereto equally across board without fear, favor, or let. For example, we have seen a manifestation of a clampdown of the security system on somebody from the southeast. We have seen for the southwest. We are yet to see somebody from the north. That is what Governor Autumn is bringing to the table. And it is high time that our colleagues, the patriots, who are serving in the security and law enforcement system, it is time for them to now say, wait a minute, we cannot afford to allow us to be labeled, and wrongly so, that we are not doing what we are supposed to do. They must drive the statements of their commander-in-chief based on the national security architecture that says the security is for the entire collective. They must now interrogate and bring to book, and if they've done some few things, they need to share that information with Nigerians mm -hmm. so that all stakeholders will begin to see that the government and their security and law enforcement system are operating across board uniformly and are trying to stabilize the Nigerian state. Okay. I want to take you back to the statement made by um, the minister, Lai Mohammed, where he said that um, they've been able to trace people, some persons, very high, uh, people that are in high position in the society to Namdekanu. And uh, this is not the first time he's making that statement. He has made the statement even before the arrest of Kanu and even before uh, the DSS raid on um, Bo's house. So like you said, he revealed some, a tip of the processes that they used in arresting Kanu. Now, if he's saying this, we, I don't know, it's a security matter. Probably government has um, information that we don't have. But how do you not tell the Nigerian people that these persons you want to ar arrest are not uh, being set up or arrested by trump up charges? Um, it's quite disturbing that um, citizen Lai Mohammed, as Minister of Information, often goes out to make some disclosures that are not immediately backed up with actions, particularly when he alleges. And before you make an allegation, from the government side, ideally, you must have carried your investigation up to a certain level. And you're sure that Sumoto, yeah. you will have one or two persons from the law enforcement system that will now say, wait a minute, we need to bring to book these individuals because they have carried the investigation up to a stage before you let a little bit, and you can see that across the globe. I recall that 
early in the administration, he made reference to some individuals of high political exposure and net worth that were corrupt. We are yet to see the list. So are we going to go through such an experience again? And that's why I said it is instructive for stakeholders to take a look at Lai Mohammed that used to robustly swing his head when he's talking, now bearing with his glasses on and as if he cannot immediately comprehend what is read. It is very instructive. The other point that we need to bring to bear is that you never come to the public to say something when the law enforcement and security agencies have not fully finished that they can apprehend. And I belong to a group where we have quite a number of senior lawyers. And part of what we've been discussing is the supremacy of rule of law or national security. If you say supremacy of rule of law, then you want the law strictly applied and adhered to. But unfortunately, there is what is now known as the subsidiarity of rule of law to national security. Mm. And the incumbent president deliberately and consciously used the Nigerian Bar Association Conference to say that rule of law was subservient and subsidiar to national security. And one of the local classical cases of the Supreme Court that is being used by proponents of that school is the Asari Dokubo versus federal government, wherein it was said that the rights of individuals or groups in the country may have to be suspended as it were for national security's sake. But most times, part of the problems we're having within the Nigerian state are created and caused by legal practitioners. This is simply because the Nigerian state has instruments, instruments, not just one, and documents that explains the national security and defense management architecture that defines what national security is. And national security transcend to all intent and purposes beyond the security of the incumbent, the incumbent administration and regime and their tenure. It includes human security, it includes health security, education security. So when you have all those multi-dimensional components of security being the focus of national security, you will see clearly that the Nigerian state is not applying the full weight of the provisions of either the Nigerian Police Act, the Nigerian Security Agencies Act, the Armed Forces Act, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, and even the Anti-Terrorism Act. We are not fully deploying it to cover the whole gamut of national security. How do I mean? Let us take a look at education. Schools are now being breached and students abducted yeah. or kidnapped. The implication on the short run is that students and parents and their guardians are afraid to go to school. And if you do not go to school for a particular period of time, ultimately you are indirectly undermining the human capacity development of the Nigerian state. And most of the states that are being affected painfully are some of the states that have been declared educationally backward, wherein you now say the scores that will gain, uh, allow them gain admission to unity schools for secondary is reduced. Yeah. So if they are no longer go to going to school, what are the implications on the long run? Then take the food security component. When you have what is now referred to as farmer elders clash, which some of us say we are dealing with nomadic headsmen related security challenges to enable us look at the legal and policy components of the manifestation of those security breaches. You will see 
trespass, criminal trespass, criminal encroachment on parcels of land that are being used for farming. Now, if people no longer go to farms and they are not able to contribute to the agricultural cycle of production, the food prices will go yes, up. Yes, that's what we are experiencing. And we have already started experiencing. When some of us kept on shouting about this 2014, 2015, actually from as far back as 2012, that we are playing with food security crisis. Now it is becoming full blown. If gari, that is supposed to be a staple food, no, the, the gari is too luxurious and people will not understand it. Let us use masara, corn, that people buy. Yes. Before, it used to be three for a hundred naira. Today, it is now one cob. For 150. For 150. If that is graphic enough, we will understand that we are dealing with a major crisis. And as such, the request by Dr. Otom, Governor of Benue State, to please refocus and let us address and deal with those who are involved, as it were, in some of these nomadic men related security breaches, and let us clamp down on them we need to restore our agricultural production to deal with the food security. So if people are making the mistake to assume that the grandstanding of statements by citizens like Nam De Kanu or Sondi Adeyemo constitute a threat, those are not the real threats. These are voices that if, for crying out loud, if you bring all the media houses to speed to understand that do not report. Mm. And you do a media blackout on them. What they are doing will not be heard. That's true. And like for some of us will say, citizen Mohammed Lai Mohammed said, ban on Twitter initially, then they changed it to, to, to suspension. There has been so much argument here and there on the subject matter, whether it's a ban or it's a suspension. For me, it is a disservice to data gathering, crowd data gathering, meant for security feedback, meant for national mood reporting and feeling the pulse of the nation, for you to summarily suspend and stifle the civic space. Mm. I think it is high time that some of us must tell those who are inside the public service today, who are government functionaries, that they are not helping the Nigerian state to grow. We are not doing the right thing because if you no longer know what the people are thinking about, which they used to express on Twitter, which they used to express on Facebook, if you want to confirm what I'm saying, Kindly ask for the Bureau of Statistics data on internet usage. The internet usage, the moment the government started saying we are going to clamp down, we are going to clamp down. Internet usage has dropped. dropped. The income for internet service providers has dropped. Soon more to sooner than later, the revenue that they are generating and the tax paid therefrom will drop. So I think we need to help the incumbent administration to understand that you must do multivariate analysis and not a binary analysis on most of these issues. They are doing a binary analysis. The binary analysis is not helping us. If you do a multivariate analysis, you will see that at the political level, you may score. But the political level will undermine the economic level. And if the economic level is undermined for today, it will affect the technological level and it will affect all the other dynamics as well. As it is now, the pictures and footage of the encroachment onto Sunday Adeyemo's residence, mm. known as Iboho, you will see blood 
indicating that somebody was dragged. Mm. For crying out loud, I'm not interested in the members of his household alone. I'm interested in Nigerians that I've had to see the footage, the pictures. There is what is called post-traumatic stress disorder. We are having a number of people that are going through post-traumatic stress disorder. And we are having a number of increased cases of suicide and attempted suicide in the country. And the one that is most scary for me is the one that will affect the operatives of security and law enforcement systems yes. who are being exposed to go and do some of these assignments. I do hope that the DG of the National, the National uh, the Directorate for State Security Service that deployed from the National Headquarters, the guys that went for this operation, will be kind enough to ensure that the officers that went for that assignment are referred to their medical facilities. Because of what they saw. Because of what they executed. Yes. Now, if you are having all that and you don't deal with the post-traumatic stress disorder of the officers you are deploying, sooner than later, do not be surprised that one day one or two of these guys can carry the firearms that you have issued to them and face some of you, the senior officers, mm. and even seemingly deal with some of the political public office holders, VIPs that they're expected to protect. Because they cannot just imagine some few things and they may see some flashes. Mm. So I'm not here interested in the razzmatazz of whether you have been able to apprehend a certain Sunday Igboho or you have been able to apprehend a man, Mazenam de Kanu. Yes, it is good, but the collective Nigerian entity, the Nigerian state, the Nigerian project, we need to now begin to discuss these issues beyond the mere level of the grandstanding of wanting to secure the right. administration. We need to get to the level that we are saying, wait a minute, what are the implications if this guy was picked from outside Nigeria? Did we do the due diligence of relating with the international stakeholders properly to ensure that this is well coordinated and there will be no backlash? All right, uh, if you're just joining us, uh, like we said when we started this program, uh, we've been speaking with uh, a political analyst, that's who he is, and he's also an expert in the national security issues, uh, a, strat uh, a security strategist. He's been talking about the effect of the arrest of uh, Namdi Kanu, as well as the raid to the home of uh, Sonia Deomo, a.k.a. Igbo, which uh, took place about uh, early hours of, um, I think it was early hours of Thursday, and uh, that has been on the news, and people have been reacting to that. Governors have been reacting, and uh, security experts have been speaking. Well, the DSS came out to say they were the ones that carried out the, th the raid, and they are calling on Sonia Igbo to submit himself to the nearest security agency for is for the benefit of everyone that is involved well to be part of this this is time for us to take our messages all you need to do is to go to the inbox or can i say facebook messenger of uh, democracy today you can get democracy today on your facebook it's a page or you can also f uh, go to my inbox and uh, drop a comment a message there We'll be taking some of your messages uh, this few time. And uh, uh, he's also here to answer if you have questions. He's an expert in security issues. He will also give answer to some of your questions. Well, uh, we'll be taking them. But I'd like to f know if, we con if this country continues in this space. Because before now, a few weeks ago, people couldn't travel. People couldn't sleep. But it seems that since the president came out to say, yes, this is what I will do, will we give them, let me rephrase the statement he made that almost caused problem. Uh, will it is time for us to give them, to, to give to them the language they understand. Things have become a bit calm 
don't you think the, the federal government is also trying to arrest the situation that is going on in Nigeria? It will be wrong to assume that it is only the federal government that is doing what needs to be done. Stakeholders of the Nigerian project have been moving up and down. Mm. You've seen suddenly um, some traditional rulers traveling and crisscrossing the Nigerian state. And you've seen religious leaders. You've seen a lot of uh, peace-building practitioners like myself holding dialogues at different levels and tiers, trying to engage all the stakeholders. So it would be wrong for us to assume it is the government alone. But it's working. Mm. Primarily because all of us do risk assessments. All of us. Paradventure, you want to do a simple analogy. You'll discover that if people are finding it difficult to travel, it affects the social safety nets and the social networking of the people. The Southeast that became a subject of interest and concern, where we started having series of security breaches, which included some facilities of INEC, police, and things like that. A number of issues are clear to us that it is not just some people attacking. It had to do with something that must be properly interrogated. And by the time a number of studies were ongoing, commissioned to explore what are the things that are probably the underpinning, the normative underpinning of some of those security breaches. Usually when a number of actors are involved in the studies, like that the state is trying to investigate, non-state actors are involved in data gathering and building the trajectories and correlations. It serves as a deterrent to those who are behind such a thing. They always back off. Yeah. And that is why the national security strategy, for example, says that it is all of governments, meaning all the tiers and arms of governments are involved, all of society, all stakeholders are involved. The moment perpetrators of evil know that they can be apprehended and the data is always available in the open, they will back off. And the moment the president came out to speak it further helped to galvanize all the resources of those stakeholders that were on the field. So if we are going to move forward, what are the things that we need to put in place to ensure that we do not have a relapse, to avoid having a relapse? For example, if you want to deal with the nomadic X-Men related security challenges, if the area wherein the crimes associated are committed is in the north. They use what is called the penal code. Mm. There are 56 provisions of the penal code that covers some of the atrocities committed by those who are involved. 78 yeah. in the criminal code. And if you subsume this into the administration of criminal justice system. We have a lot to do. Okay. If only we would just swing into action and start doing all these things.